How's it going, everybody? It's Paul the Flame, and we are back with the FPL launch for the 23-24 FPL season here on the 5th of July, 2023. FPL is live, uh, and we're going to take a look at all the player prices. Um, I've already gone ahead and done my uh, auto-pick team uh, to get myself a, a little bit lesser of a, a rank, an easier rank, as it were, uh, to, 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 to remember. Although I think I have like similar digits to what I had last year. Um, I think I had four, it was four, eight, four, five, one, seven. And I think my uh, five digit rank now ends in a, or ID rather, I keep calling it rank, uh, ends in five, one, six. I would love a 14 K rank at the end of the season. That'd be great. Uh, but we've done the auto pick team. We've added our team name. We've done our kit. We've done all of that. We got to set up the league though. So we will do that live on stream. So, and it looks like they're filtering in some of the kits for all the different teams. So, without further ado, before we start the stream, let's talk about our sponsors for this season. Fantasy Football Scout has all the tools that you will need as an FPL manager. 30% off this preseason using the link in the about section in the description of our YouTube or my pinned tweet over on Twitter. Make sure to check out fantasyfootballscout.co.uk. They have the members there, which is fantastic. A bunch of different articles, a bunch of different tools, a bunch of different resources over there that's going to help elevate your FPL game. They're the best in the business. They've been doing it since 2007, since basically the game kind of was a thing. So make sure to go check them out. You need to be linked up with them this season to help improve your FPL game. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. So, apologies for that. Yeah, I've been dealing with a pretty, pretty bad cough, uh, unfortunately. Might not have enough water for this stream. But yeah, I, I made a random team, so please ignore the one on screen. Uh, it's not great. I think initially I might have had Tony Captain, I can't remember. But it's got Allison Vice Captain, which is interesting. Uh, but we go th we'll go through all the all the prices and stuff as well um so yeah let's get right into it so let me just maneuver this uh so let's go straight into it um so let's let's do the league first let's get that done and out of the way uh leagues and cups uh pilot flames flames recruits uh if we want to invite people to join this league uh, looks like uh, quite a few people are back in the league. Um, and invite people to join this league. So this is our uh, new league code. So I'm going to copy this. Uh, and I'm going to put this in the uh, league code thing. Here we go. Properties. Off we go. I uh, didn't copy it for some reason. Uh, 8SH2TU. That looks good to me. That looks good to me. Uh, what I'll also do in the meantime as well, we'll do that over on Twitter. So let me make sure that everyone has that available. Uh, where are we at here? So leak code. Edit profile. Here we go. Uh, and we got uh, 8SH2TU. Um, I think we should be good on that. Uh, right. So now I can close that. So we've got the lead code. So this is the lead code. Um, you can share it by email and stuff that you can copy an auto join link. I guess I can do that on, 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 uh, on YouTube, I guess. Uh, did I do one for YouTube before? I can't remember. Uh, let me see if I do have it. Go into the old YouTube studios. Uh, I wasn't able to do this yes, uh, not yesterday, uh, today. Uh, I was only able to do a couple things. Uh, let's see. So 
upload defaults uh scout oh here we go auto join link here we go control v there we go easy peasy all right now we can close it now we can get to the real stuff so right here we go also some of the shirts it says are still being produced like you can see like pope and allison don't have their goalkeeping kits as of yet we got 0.5 million in the bank <clears throat> for our auto select team here so we will run through all the different players and that sort of stuff um so i'll start with the basics first i, I like to do this every season if i can So basically how the game works is the following. You start the season. Everyone starts fresh slate, same rank, uh, with 15 players available and 100 million pounds of budget. You have 15 players that you could choose from. You're allowed to select up to two goalkeepers. You're allowed to select up to five defenders, five midfielders, and five forwards. Uh, what constitutes a goalkeeper? Uh, somebody that plays in goal. Uh, typically someone that has the gloves on their hands. Uh, the ones that are usually weird colors or look like oven mitts a little bit. And typically stay around the near the goal. Uh, defenders are classified as any player that plays as a center back, a full back, or a wing back. So... In a th so for those that don't know, in a wing back system, a three four three, uh, the two wide players in the four are considered wing backs and will be classified as a defender if they play the majority of the season as that. Midfielders is anyone who plays in defensive midfield, central midfield, attacking midfield, or as a wide forward or winger type player. So players like Mo Salah, uh, players uh, like. Um, uh, Dwight McNeil, all these sorts of players that play out wide will be considered midfielders uh, this season as they have not changed their stance on that, which I think is fine. Uh, forwards is basically anyone who plays either a false nine in a central striker role, uh, dropping off the line, playing as the central striker, or playing in a front two in a two-man striker system. So as an example, um, if uh, the majority of the season Calvert-Lewin and... Uh, Damari Gray, as an example, play as a front two uh, on paper for Sean Dyche, which he tends to play 4-4-2. Uh, then Damari Gray will get changed to a forward. I think he's currently a midfielder if he's uh, still on Everton's books, but I'm pretty sure he is. Um, so that's what you have available to do. Uh, players are classified in their position. They do not change mid-season. However, they can change price. Uh, price changes happen after the, the start of game week one. Players will go up in value by 0.1 uh, every price change. They can go up multiple times in a week if they wanted to, if they receive enough transfers in for themselves. Players can also go down by 0.1 uh, per price change, uh, depending on how many times they're transferred out. At least that's what we kind of understand as a, as a basic uh, kind of rule of thumb for the algorithm-ish thing that the FPL towers uh, use. Uh, you can then sell said players later on in the season. Uh, if they have increased by 0.2 while they've been in your team, you can sell them for 50% of the profit. So if I bought, uh, let's say, uh, Raya as an example, at 5 million, and he went up to 5.2, I can then sell him for 5.1 if I wanted to. Uh, and then so on and so forth. Uh, apologies for, uh, I think someone's opening up uh, my garage, but that's fine. Um... I'm one of the family members, obviously. Uh, hopefully, no one's breaking in. That'd be bad. Um, so that's how it works. If Raya, I had Raya at five million, and he went down to four point eight, I can sell him for four point eight. I can't sell him for four point nine. When it when you lose value on a player, it stays full value. When you gain value on a player, you get fifty percent, and they have to go up by at least an even number of point x uh, up on a player in order for you to gain uh, their to gain 0.1 so every 0.2 you gain 0.1 on sell every 0.1 you lose on a player you can sell them for 0.1 less basically uh or more uh you also notice in fpl there's different flags pretty straightforward just kind of click on them and it will tell you uh what 
you know is wrong with those players i auto select the, the team it happened to pick ivan tony who is suspended uh due to off field uh uh, findings as were we'll leave it at that uh, but typically you can find the information here uh, for a player as to why they are flagged uh, typically if they are flagged there's doubt over their concerns but I would suggest fantasy football scout will do a uh, weekly or game weekly uh, kind of rundown with uh, Neo and Joe typically are the ones that do it uh, and they talk about all the players who are injured suspended and all that sort of stuff so make sure to check that out that's over on the fantasy football scout YouTube channel make sure to subscribe over there as well um and yeah i think the point system is kind of covered in the rules and that sort of stuff um you can only play a minimum of three defenders two midfielders and one forward you have to play a goalkeeper if a player does not partake in any point of the game uh your substitutes will come on in order and they will have to fulfill the minimum requirements uh as need be for the restrictions set by formation so that's kind of the rundown of the rules uh, or like kind of how the game works. I just do that for those that are coming new to the game. They see the video. Hey, look. And then, uh, you know, it's pretty straightforward. I do believe I have a video on my channel that actually kind of explains the rules in a bit more detail. Um, I may run over the, you know, some of uh, similar topics, but um yeah so let's move into the actual teams themselves so we'll run down uh team by team and we'll see kind of what players we saw or players we didn't see and we'll kind of talk about them uh in the key points uh about them so arsenal coming second last season ramsdale was five million last season he's five million again um, I think there's going to be some that go in on him, but I think his price is not going to be warranted uh, in a sense. I mean, he's already 25% owned by managers who have potentially auto-selected or um, or have uh, kind of come in and quickly done their team. And the reason for that is the fact that Zinchenko, which we saw his price being revealed um, beforehand, he came in at... Uh, 5 million, which is the same as Ramsdale. is going to get some attacking returns. Is nailed on. Um, I expect him to, assuming he's fit, um, be the defender of choice. Uh, Saliba uh, and Gabriel, both 5 million as well. Same price. Uh, I expect them to be much highly earned than the likes of Ben White, who's come in at 5.5 million. I think this is potentially a mistake because he could be rotated uh, with the likes of Urian Timber, who's going to be a new signing for Arsenal uh, in the coming weeks. As for the rest of the defenders, not really too much to be said here, other than the fact that you can get potentially Kieran Tierney playing in at left back if Zinchenko were to be injured for 0.5 less, um, if that were to kind of, uh, if they were to cross that bridge. Um, but overall, I think Zinchenko, out of defensive options, is the one to kind of go for, at least initially. Again, we'll do a little bit more of a dive into the teams. Uh, we'll probably do it in bunches of five. I probably won't do it as similar as to how I did the, the preseason videos from before. Um, but once uh, teams have a few games under their belts, uh, then we will kind of break down and you know, like look at what we're what we're seeing, basically. Then on to the midfields. This is where I think they potentially made another mistake. So Bakayo Saka and Martin Odegaard have both come in at 8.5 million. I think Bakayo Saka should be 9 million. He should be the same price as Rashford. He is the one on penalties. Yes, he got less points than Odegaard. But um, you know he's their talisman. And it does at least make a little bit of a choice here. Uh, probably not many are going to go for Martinelli. Even though he did score quite nicely last season. His price was quite favorable at six million. Coming in at eight, I think, is probably if he had come at seven five, there's at least a massive decision there. Uh, or at least if Saka was at nine and Odegaard was eight five and Martin Lenny was eight. Um, I'm still potentially looking at it because I think Martin Lenny is a good player. Um, and Arsenal have good fixtures off the start. So um Havertz uh recently transferred from Chelsea. I uh, don't think many will jump in on him initially. Uh, I think it's a wait and see on what his position is actually gonna be in the Arsenal squad. Gabriel Jesus, 
uh, injured for a large portion of last season, but started off really well. Uh, still ended up with 18 goal involvements. I think he could potentially push on, assuming he stays fit. 8 million, I think, could be a steal for him. Uh, he came in at that price last season, and we all thought that was way too cheap. So that could be an option for uh, us FPL managers. So I think uh, in terms of players that I'm looking at, that I'm going to put on my watch list, I'm going to do that as I'm going through these. Um, not, I'm going to put uh, Zinchenko for sure. You can use this add to watch list button here. It's very handy. Add to watch list. And then you can just have just a list of players that you're going to be looking at. Uh, Saka's going to be on the watch list. Odegaard will put on the watch list as well. Uh, Martinelli. Uh, Havertz, I'm not interested in. I still want to. It's a wait and see. Uh, I'm kind of using the watch list as players that I am like highly considering putting in my in my uh, FPL team uh, right away, basically. Uh, and then on the second page, uh, Balogun at 4.5 million could be an interesting option as a backup striker. If he were to go to another Premier League club, he could be quite interesting at 4.5 million. Keep an eye on him. Uh, but maybe one to look at at a later date. Moving on to Aston Villa. A lot of these prices we already saw uh, for the most part. Martinez at 5 million, probably not going to entertain that. Going to go much cheaper in goal. Uh, Tyrone Mings at 4.5 million, I think could be quite good. Played a lot of minutes last season. However, uh, Aston Villa at the time of recording, being the 7th of, uh, 5th of July, sorry. Um, I think I might, at the beginning I might have said the f 7th of July, but I meant the 5th, um, if I did. Uh, they have, uh, at least Fabrizio Romano has said the here we go, uh, for Pau Torres, who's most likely going to replace Tyrone Mings. Now, if Pau Torres comes into 4.5, then there's a conversation there, but as it currently stands, Tyrone Mings is the 4.5 million defender. Uh, I think Matty Cash is potentially one to look at. Uh, as a rotational option if you have somebody who can rotate well with him i think him at 4.5 million uh, is a good option ash young is no longer at the club so he doesn't really have any direct competition um, and i think that mings could be uh, kind of pushed out jacob ramsey currently uh with the under 21s i believe they're in the final now i think i saw them beat uh, i believe it was israel in the semi-final 3-0 so he will be probably getting back potentially late uh, for preseason. But 6 million, probably not going to look at him initially attacking-wise. Uh, just because Newcastle away, Burnley away, Liverpool away in the opening four isn't ideal. Burnley away is always kind of just tough. Um, and a bit of an unknown. And Burnley might even fancy themselves. Uh, but the fixtures aren't all that. I mean, Newcastle and Liverpool away in your first two isn't or first four isn't ideal, uh, attacking wise. When Diaz six million, you probably go Ramsey over him. Uh, Tielemans could take penalties uh, for Aston Villa. Not really sure how that team's going to shape up with him in there now. Uh, we'll have to wait and see on him. I think uh, Watkins, who was quite good last season, getting. Uh, 23 goal involvements, 15 goals, 8 assists. Uh, pretty consistent, Ollie Watkins. Um, getting double-digit goals pretty much every season. Um, picked up his assists uh, from where he left off back in 2020, in 2021 season. Uh, I think we're going to we're gonna utilize him at some point. Um, uh, at some point, presumably during this run here, uh, for when he uh, you know, starts at uh, you know, Brighton, uh, could be quite good of a fixture run there. Um, and he'll be per fairly popular off the start because he's one of the higher scoring forwards uh, for Villa. So the players that we'll keep an eye on, uh, just for our initial uh, team, I don't think I'm going to have Watkins in it at all, but Matty Cash could be one as a rotational 4.5 million defender, which could allow for more budget. The rest of the players for Aston Villa, not going to potentially look at. Bournemouth, um, I'm not really going to be looking at any Bournemouth players. And the reason being is because if you look at their fixtures off the start, yes, they have West Ham at home, but then they go away to Liverpool, home to Spurs, away to Brentford, home to Chelsea, away to, Ar away to Ar Brighton, home to Arsenal. Just not going to be great. Attacking-wise, it's probably not great fixtures either. Uh, I'm not going to be putting any Bournemouth players on the watch list. Um, I think Clivert is potentially an interesting price. I don't know where he's going to be positioned, but at $5 million, if he's doing something, then maybe he could be a nice budget enabler. 
Slanky at 6.5 million, I think he could be good at some point during the season. Uh, maybe there'd be little spells like this one here where we could get him in as a cheap forward. Uh, but off the start, Bournemouth is definitely going to have to show us something a bit more um, to show us uh, what, what they can and can't do. Uh, unless Hill, as an example, is a playing 4 million uh, defender then Bournemouth won't see any interest because unfortunately all the defender prices have been kind of compressed. I think the defense is probably the worst priced uh, out of all the positions where I think the midfield uh, and the forwards have been the best priced. Goalkeepers are kind of just, meh, they just kind of whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, if you have a lot of like the relegation teams or a lot of the teams that were lower down the table having 4.5 million defenders, and we'll see when we get to like Newcastle as an example, um, you just can't have defenders that are 4.5 that are just like playing week in, week out. So, unfortunately, we won't be looking at any Bournemouth uh, players. Uh, on to Brentford. So, David Raya, we mentioned him previously. Uh, he's 5 million, likely to get a move away from uh, from Brentford. Uh, if you were to stay 5 million for a Brentford keeper off the start, could be okay. Their first four is pretty good. Um, we would hope that he would get... Um, that he would get uh, sold to another club. And the reason being is because uh, their new goalkeeper that they brought in, Mark Flecken, uh, he is 4.5 million. So that would be quite good to have a 4.5 million goalkeeper uh, as a kind of uh, starting goalkeeper that has good fixtures off the start. Um, you don't want to have both, obviously, because that would just take up too much budget, I think. Um, so hopefully Rhea does make the move and then it gives us another goalkeeping option. But uh, wherever Rhea goes, I'm not really sure. I mean, Man United are looking at Onana now. Uh, Spurs have already signed a goalkeeper. It might He might go to Chelsea, maybe, is a possibility. Um, and then him and Kepa could duke it out. Uh, Liverpool and Man City don't need goalkeepers. Uh, Newcastle don't need a goalkeeper either. Um, uh, Brighton's already signed a goalkeeper as well. Aston Villa already have Martinez, so he can't really go anywhere. So he might go on a free uh, next summer. So that would be a wait and see. And then you have situations where like Ben Mee is a five million. Yes, he got a few goals last season uh, from some like set plays and stuff. But you're always going to pick like Rico Henry, uh, who's come in at four point five million again. Uh, got himself three assists, which isn't bad. Over a hundred points, which isn't bad. Which when you think about it, is more than any Man City defender, and you'll see it. It's mind blowing that no Man City defender got more than a uh, hundred points last season because of the amount of rotation. Um, Nathan Collins is coming from Wolves, so we would expect him to go into the back line uh, alongside Ben Mee, um, and could be one of the kind of mainstays uh, in the team. Uh, you know, we could expect more minutes for a year. Uh, which could reduce the minutes of Ethan Pinnock, who was a, a hero uh, towards the end of the last season, getting three goals in that final stretch there. Uh, so you're, it's going to be even more incentivized to pick Rico Henry if you are going to pick a rotational uh, defender. Uh, and if we uh, go back to Aston Villa really quickly, uh, and we look at their fixtures for from a defensive standpoint, game week one, game week four, uh, in game week six in the opening uh in the opening six so one four six if we remember those going into Brentford do they rotate nicely let's see uh one Spurs at home is not bad four Bournemouth at home is good and then six so you kind of would take that to be honest uh, as a rotation uh there so maybe one to keep an eye on so we'll come back to that um Brian and Bomo comes in at a 6.5 million midfielder. We saw that as one of the reveals. Nine goals, nine assists last season. We'll be playing up front. I think he's going to be a huge bandwagon to start the season. And I think that he could do quite well. Um, if he's playing up front, 6.5 million for a player that's playing out of position, uh, he will be uh, very, very good uh, across the season. Also took a penalty towards the end of last season as well, which he converted. Uh, so he will be a massive, massive favorite. Uh, and then kind of to point out, Ivan Tony uh, is suspended until 17th of January due to his uh, over 200 counts or whatever it was of betting. 
um, which is ironic considering they have Hollywood bets as their sponsor still. Uh, but Ivan Tony was magnificent last season. Eight million, he'll drop down a little bit probably. Uh, not many will start with him, but uh, he will probably drop down. Uh, and I think his price point uh, alongside a couple others that are at eight million is a very good price point. Uh, and then on the second page, uh, just a couple of uh, other random uh, players there. Um, so I think the players to look uh, to potentially put on the watch list is Rico Henry as a rotational defender. This just makes the most sense. There's no one really uh, kind of jostling him for his position. Uh, and Brian and Bomo at 6.5 million in midfield. I think we're at 6 million, maybe, but I think they might sign a striker to go alongside uh, in Bomo uh, could be a good option there. So, moving on to Brighton. Brighton have also signed a new goalkeeper. Uh, Ver Bruggen, I think is how you pronounce his name, 4.5 million. Uh, him or Steele will most likely be the starters as Sanchez is looking to move away uh, from Brighton, having played there for the last few seasons. Um... I still think that there's not many places for goalkeepers to go uh, in the Premier League that isn't similar or lower level uh, in this in this case because we just mentioned a bunch of teams that already have a goalkeeper or looking at different options. Um, so it's, I wouldn't be going near Steele or uh, Verbruggen if that's how you pronounce his name uh, because there's just better value uh, in the defense for Brighton if you were going to go there and we don't know which goalkeeper is going to start the season. Uh, Stupinian was brilliant uh, in the uh, uh, stages when he was uh, involved in Brighton's team, playing 2,600 minutes or just shy of 2,700. Uh, one goal, seven assists, 10 clean sheets. Very, very good. Already, I believe, the highest earned uh, defender in the game at 5 million. He is definitely one to look at for sure. A dunk, I think, is also a good uh, option as well. If you did want to go in the double up, you know he's going to play every week. Um, does have a mistake in every now and again, but will get himself uh, involved in the clean sheets. Maybe not necessarily bonus or um, or super super you know corner threat, but uh, as you know, he got one goal, one assist last season. But he can you know get a few. I mean, the 2020, 2021 season, five goals, uh, so he could be an option for us. And I think those are the only real two there. Moving into the midfield, we saw that Pascal Gross, Solly March, um, and Karen Matoma uh, all came in at the same price. I think a lot of managers are just going to go for Matoma just because of his attacking threat, his proximity to goal, um, his consistency of starts. I think he will be the one to go for for sure. But I don't think that doesn't rule out Pascal Gross if he's playing the number 10 role. If he's the one to kind of be a bit more advanced, then he could be quite good. If it is and CISO, who's the bit more advanced player, 5.5 million, he could be a steal. Did get four goals, three assists in, un in 800 minutes, which is quite good. So I think that is one to watch out for too. But again, that is mainly dictated off how Brighton are going to play and who they're going to sign. Welbeck and Ferguson, as we expected, came in the same price, 6 million. Ferguson, six goals, two assists in under 1,000 minutes, which is very good. Um... If Ferguson, and I knew Ferguson was playing week in, week out, um, you know, first three fixtures look brilliant for him, and he's just a machine. So, could be one to go for. Uh, but, unfortunately, I think we need to see a bit more from preseason. Uh, Jao Pedro, another one who did sign, um, comes in as a forward 5.5 million. Will he take more minutes off potentially a wide player? Uh, he likes to play off wide left. So... That could be an interesting one. Maybe that reduces Matoma's minutes or maybe a little bit more depth going into European competition, which they have for the first time this season. So players that I'd be looking at uh, will to be adding to my uh, team right away would be Estupinian. Uh, Dunk is definitely a consideration still uh, in the event that Estupinian isn't like kind of available. Um, I think Matoma is definitely there. Uh, I think Sully March is definitely involved in there. Uh, Pascal Gross, depending on position, is potentially in there. Um, and CISO will wait on, and then Evan Ferguson will add there as well. 
Moving into Burnley, and again, another situation where we have a lot of 4 million defenders. Uh, are they going to be playing week in, week out? Uh, there's talks of Jordan Bayer is one that's played quite a bit uh, for Burnley last season. He could be one, uh, but all things considered, we're not going to be paying too much attention. Uh, you have the likes of Val Veghorst, who was formerly at Manchester United, formerly at uh, Fenerbahce, I believe, uh, as he was on loan. Probably won't be looking at any of them to be honest so bear would be the only one that i would put on the watch list just because he could be a 4.0 enabler moving into chelsea this is where we get a lot of players that have reduced uh or reduction rather in price keppa it comes in at five million i think that's probably a bit too much i think for him uh at least off the start defensively chelsea's fixtures are good uh after a game week two um, I mean, you can even argue the West Ham picture is really good too. But uh, yeah, I think a lot will a lot will show in those first two a tough away game uh, against a London rival, uh, and then hosting Liverpool on opening day for Maurizio Pochettino. Chilwell and Reese James both come in at five point five million. I think this is a brilliant price for them. But again, the lack of minutes is a concern. For only fourteen hundred minutes for Ben Chilwell last season. Uh, and Reese James, 1,242 minutes last season for him as well. So they could be huge risks. And I think at 5.5 million, they're potentially a risk worth taking. And they'll be one to keep an eye on. Um, another thing that could also prove to be interesting, which kind of links with Brighton. Uh, Levi Colwell was on loan at Brighton last season. They are pushing for his signature, so he could be a 4.5 million mainstay uh, in the back line for Deserby's men. Uh, but he could also be starting for Chelsea on a week in week basis, and 4.5 million for a Chelsea defender could be quite good. As for the rest of the defenders, it could be a who's who back there uh, of what's going on. But Pochettino will be playing a back four. Um, most likely, and one thing to also notice is that uh, Malagusto is a potential Reese James uh, backup at four million. One to keep an eye on. In midfield, Raheem Sterling. I mean, Raheem Sterling put up some crazy numbers several seasons ago: two hundred four, two thirty, two thirty four, two twenty nine. Raheem Sterling is very, very good as an FPL asset. However, he hasn't found the form. Uh, that what he once had at Manchester City. I think at seven million, he could make a serious mockery of that price. So again, one to keep an eye on. Maybe not necessarily right off the start, but one to potentially move on early. Uh, Mason Mount will go to Manchester United at seven million. Could affect how Bruno Fernandez plays potentially, but we'll have to wait and see. But he won't be at Chelsea and will be moved to Manchester United's roster in the coming days. Uh, Armando Broya could provide uh, the forward that they need uh, as an out and out forward. They did also recently uh, buy, let's go to the second page for, the, for this, uh, Nicholas Jackson at 7 million, very young, talented player. He could be the forward uh, that Chelsea would use through the middle. But they also have Christopher Nkunku, who seems to be quite popular, um, especially in the Champions League uh, fantasy game. 7.5 million, I think, is a very good price. Again, does, does, you know, kind of learned his kind of trade, as it were, and became popularized in the world of football in the Bundesliga for RB Leipzig, uh, and then formerly of PSG. Uh, but I think Chris Van Kunku could do quite well. I think I would expect him to potentially be in one of our drafts at some point. And then you have Lukaku, who is 7 million, which is interesting. Uh, but we expect him to probably go back to Inter Milan at some point. So Nkunku, I will put on the watch list. I will also put Ben Chilwell. I'm also going to put uh, Reese James. And I think even Raheem Sterling is potentially still an outside shout if I see what I like in preseason because I know he's just that good of a player. Moving into Crystal Palace, the best jersey the best kits in all of the land.
We saw Sam Johnston's price release, 4.5 million. I think he could be quite a good good pick. Um, you know, Arsenal at home, Brentford away isn't the greatest. Aston Villa away isn't the greatest. Uh, but a couple of decent uh, fixtures in game weeks one and four could be an option. But I think there's going to be more favorable 4.5 million goalkeepers. I considered starting with him. He is potentially one to look at. So I might just put him on the list just because he does make a good bit of saves. Uh, last season in his 800 minutes played, got a few clean sheets, um, made 26 saves, which is quite a lot um, in those games, uh, and can put up some decent stats, you know. So uh, we shall see on Sam Johnston. Crystal Palace defenders, all 4.5, barring a few. Um, we have the likes of Mark Gahey and Anderson coming at a 4.5 million. I think as rotational options, they seem perfectly fine. Um, again, the uh, one four six option uh, is definitely uh, a thing here with Sheffield United away, Wolves at home, Fulham at home, rotational option with Aston Villa. Again, a good defensive rotation there. Uh, Joachim Anderson spent last season a bit uh, ha having some bit of injury problems, uh, so uh, he's probably a bit more a bit better for bonus. Uh, makes a lot more of their passing. Um, uh, for for like progressive passes at least, uh, so it could be uh, an option. So if you look like Gehi, thirty three hundred minutes uh, versus Anderson's twenty seven or twenty eight hundred minutes, uh, and they were basically similar in points. So I'd probably pick Anderson over Gehi if I did have to choose. Everett Eze is one to look at this season. Ten goals, five assists last season. Six point five million is probably going to be playing probably off the left now. Now that Zaha is a free agent, potentially won't re-sign. He could also be playing the number ten. Roy Hodgson has signed up for another year, which is weird because they ran the the stats uh, as to when Vieira played the same teams that Roy Hodgson did. Um, and Vieira like got like two more points or something like that. Won the same number of games, which is crazy. But anyway, Eze is definitely one to look out for. Uh, Elise has a hamstring injury. Apparently, he's going for a scan or he, he needs surgery or something. So he might not be ready for the start of the season. Uh, and then we have the likes of Odson Edward. Uh, 5.5 million could be the starting forward. He might be the one that ends up going off the left instead. Of Zaha, and they might run Mateta through the middle. We'll have to wait and see what Roy Hodgson does, but I think Eze is definitely the standout. I'm adding him to the watch list. I'm adding Joachim Anderson to the watch list, uh, and I'm also adding Sam Johnston. Next up, we have Everton. Uh, we have Jordan Pickford, 4.5 million. Uh, fixtures off the start in the opening eight are quite good. Can still pick up some saves uh, versus Arsenal, I would expect. But all in all, probably one of the best set of fixtures for a cheap goalkeeper. He would definitely be on the watch list for sure. So we'll add him in there. He could even be rotated with another 4.5 million goalkeeper. Um which is possible. Uh, I would say a backup option as a rotational option in defense could be James Tarkowski. Again, fixture-wise, let's check it again. The 1-4-6. So Fulham, Wolves, Brentford. Pretty decent rotation there with Villa as well. I think James Tarkowski is definitely one to consider. And it's going to play week in, week out under Sean Dyche. Assuming he's fit, obviously. Um, and has massive set piece threat. Midfield, a lot of the mainstays: Gray, McNeil, Iwobi, Decore, five point five million. Probably not going to go there. Uh, but one thing that is interesting is the fitness of Dominic Calvert Lewin. Uh, formerly uh, quite good in the 2020-2021 season, sixteen goals, six assists. Uh, just literally has not been fit since um, that season. I believe was under Carlo Ancelotti. He was fantastic. Um, but at six million, if he were to stay fit, he could be quite good, um, especially with the opening fixtures that they do have. Even if he stays fit for these four and then gets injured, I think you probably take that uh, because um, voice cracked a little bit there. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, Fulham uh, at home, Wolves at home, Sheffield United away. I think these are all decent fixtures. But if he can stay fit, we know how good Dominic Calvert-Lewin can be, and he's perfect for a 
Rashawn Dice system. So I will put him on the watch list as a potential budget uh, pick uh, if things are required for that. Fulham, we have uh, Bernd Leno, formerly of Arsenal. Uh, did quite well last season, 142 points. Uh, kept himself eight clean sheets. So Fulham could have kept a lot more clean sheets as well. Uh, he did make quite a few saves. Uh, is often in the bonus when Fulham do keep a clean sheet. Um, and I think that he could be quite good. The opening fixtures aren't great. Uh, they have Everton away, Brentford at home, Arsenal away, Man City away. Uh, and he could be one to kind of just you kind of ride the ship with getting save points. Maybe it's for at a later time, but it's definitely one to add to the watch list because he could be a cheaper goalkeeper to kind of rotate away from Pickford if and when uh, Everton were to um, kind of start sinking, as it were. Um, so... Moving into the Fulham defense, again, not really going to be taking a look at any of their defenders. Tete would be the only one that I would potentially consider, but all things, you know, kind of being, you know, kind of straightforward here. We're not looking at these defenders when you have the likes of Newcastle defenders and, you know, Arsenal defenders coming in at the price they are and City defenders coming at the price they are. You know, it's, we're not really going there. Uh, Andres Per is one to watch for. 5.5 man could be an interesting midfield spot. Uh, probably unlikely to make the team, but is still a consideration as a budget midfielder if we need to go for a bit more beef up front. But again, one to watch for. Mitrovic, we won't be going for off the start. Again, their fixtures aren't good enough. Uh, we need to also see him not, you know, kind of chest bumping referees and stuff like that. So, um, uh, again, one to uh, kind of... Uh, look forward to later on in the season potentially around game week five when he gets looting um so not much from fulham liverpool now we're potentially going to be looking a lot at liverpool uh, allison for those that are choosing allison don't um he will uh get points over the season maybe we might want him for a double game week but you don't want to spend 5.5 million for a goalkeeper just note that if uh, allison were to get injured kelleher being four million would be a steal uh, we have Trent Alexander-Arnold came in at eight million. We are uh, pretty surprised by this um, coming in at eight million, and he is someone who I think could be uh, very, very explosive in his new role. Um, if he goes back to the seasons of old, where you know the two hundred ten points, two hundred eight points, these types of seasons could be very, very insane value at eight million. Um, Virgil van Dijk came in at 6 million. Uh, he is one to, uh, just be Mr. Consistent, uh, 2 million less than Trent. So that is one to kind of consider Liverpool's fixtures off the start with Chelsea away and Newcastle away aren't great. So it may be one to kind of come back to Trent. You're not necessarily looking for a clean sheet necessarily. Maybe you are versus Bournemouth at home, but, uh, van Dijk is going to be maybe more of a set piece oriented, but he is 2 million less. Uh, with Robertson coming in at 0.5 million more than that at 6.5. Same price as uh, one other defender in the game, which we'll get to. Which is Kieran Trippier for Newcastle. Uh, probably not going to go near Robertson. If you're going to go for a Liverpool defender, you're going to go for Trent, or you're going to go for probably nobody. Uh, Kanata is interesting, though, if Liverpool's defense were to, you know, be a lot better. Um, Kanata at 5 million could be quite interesting. And we come on to Mo Salah. Mo Salah is someone that has been heavily in our fantasy teams from the start uh, for several seasons now. The man has not scored uh, anything under a bazillion points, basically, uh, since he's kind of just been playing. Um, last season was an off season, and he got 239 points, which is still crazy good. Um if he's off penalties, then his price point does get kind of diminished in that sense. Um, I think potentially there could be a lot of us waiting and seeing uh, how Liberal kind of shape up because uh, new signings uh, with the likes of uh, Dominic Subasly uh, at $7 million, uh, and Alexis McAllister 
coming in from Brighton could change the dynamic of how Trent goes into midfield and how Salah orients himself on the pitch. So that might be a slight wait and see. Uh, Salah could still be someone we do end up putting in our teams. Uh, I don't think I added Trent. Uh, if I didn't, that's bad. But he's definitely on the consideration. Diego Schott is somebody that's going to be a wait and see as well. Has had his injury problems. Don't know if he's first choice. Um, we will leave him there. But he has been moved to a midfielder as well. So one to keep an eye on. Uh, and then we have the likes of Darwin Nunez and Cody Gakpo at 7.5 million. Uh, they could be ones to look out for as well. I don't think I'm going to start with either of them uh, personally. Uh, if I was going to pick one, I, I guess I'll put Gakpo um, there. But uh, I think it's going to wait and see to see who is the kind of main stay in the team. All right, moving on to Luton. Again, not really looking at any player here, apart from Bell, uh, who is a 4 million defender that played 46 out of the 48 games of the championship last season. So he's the only one that we'll be adding to the list. The rest of the prices don't really matter all that much. Uh, personally, uh, Morris, again, is 5.5 million. He might gain some traction, but overall, we're not going to be paying attention to Luton, even though they do have okay fixtures off the start. <clears throat> Man City, the treble winning Manchester City. We see Ederson there at 5.5 million. Don't pick Ederson. <laughs> Is basically the lesson we should have all learned from last season. Um... He will probably be auto-picked in a lot of teams. Uh, but Ederson's not going to make many saves. I mean, he's got 46 saves, but he will get some clean sheets because City are just good at holding the ball. Um, just know that if he were to get injured, then uh, Ortega is 4 million, which could be an option. Uh, City defenders John Stones and Ruben Diaz come in at 5.5 million. I think Stones could be quite good. Is injury-prone John Stones, but could be good value. If Ake and Akanji are to be mainstays, let's say they, uh, you know, Man City don't get Guardiola over the line, uh, then they could be great value at five million. Laporte is likely to be uh, on reduced minutes or shipped out the door. Cancelo is likely to be sold as well, so I wouldn't be picking either of them. But I think if there had to be one to look at. Uh, it would be John Stones. I expect them to get Vardio over the line. Uh, he'll probably come in at 5.5 million as well. But with uh, Stones moving into midfield and playing kind of, you know, through balls and that sort of stuff could be quite good. Kevin De Bruyne has a hamstring injury and will probably miss the start of the season, which could open up for the likes, excuse me, of Phil Foden. Only played 1,900 minutes last season. Got 11 goals and 7 assists. That's still pretty good. I expect Phil Foden to have a good start to the season, especially if he's picked in the role, kind of just in behind Holland, Riyad Mahrez, Jack Grealish, uh, players that are constantly in and around the team. Jack Grealish only got uh, 2,000 minutes last season. Uh, Riyad Mahrez, 1,900. Phil Foden, uh, 1800 Phil Foden was actually injured for a decent bit of it and I think that's mainly due to the fact that he was able to play a lot of the Premier League games when City kind of uh, had sort of wrapped up the league and were kind of focusing on the Champions League and FA Cup and that sort of stuff but I think Phil Foden is the one to watch out of the three as he's shown that he can just absolutely rip up teams uh, Mateo Kovacic formerly of Chelsea could take up that Gundogan role and at 5 million could be a crazy crazy price uh, likelihood is his role will probably be a little bit different than Ilkay Gundogan's, uh, most likely. Uh, and then there's some dude named Erling Haaland that's 14 million, but we'll add him to the watch list because he scored a bazillion points last season. So, <laughs> and he's already almost 81 percent. That's crazy. Uh, as a note, Julian Alvarez is 6.5 million. So if Haaland were to get injured, that would make things real interesting. So, one to keep an eye on. Moving on to the neighbors from down the road, Manchester United and my club. Uh, currently, no goalkeepers on the list uh, that want to be a starter or will be staying there. Dean Henderson, likely to go back to Forest. Still a fee yet to be agreed for the Englishman. 
uh, and I expect that when United uh, do sign a goalkeeper, it'll probably be either 5 or 5.5 million, which is still an option. Uh, because if it is Onana, which is what the current you know rumor mill is showing at the moment, Onana is very, very good with his feet, which will create passing numbers, which will create BPS. He's also very good at long passes, which also create BPS. So he could be a good option, especially if he is at 5 million, as you can get him slightly cheaper than the newly priced Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw comes in at 5.5 million. I think this is a very good price for him. And we'll probably see him over any other United defender, which has a lot of them on the list. Uh, but most of them aren't very useful, uh, to be honest. Um, I think you're just going to go with Shaw. If you know that wan is out or there's no you know, backup to Delo, then maybe Delo at 5 million could be an option too. Um, into midfield, uh, we'll add uh, Shaw, by the way. To the watch list uh marcus rashford and bruno fernandez coming at 0.5 million uh slightly more than bruno fernandez i think both players warrant being on the watch list for sure i think their link up could be intriguing i think with mason mount uh potentially being more involved on the right hand side of the central midfield positions bruno fernandez tends to uh you know kind of float over to the left hand side we could see a lot of bruno fernandez interchange with rashford whereas we could see more of mountain anthony on the other side that would balance out the midfield a lot better uh, and I think that that could be quite good. Uh, I think this pricing was a lot better than the Arsenal one because we should expect Saka to be the same price as Rashford. It just makes more sense to me, to be honest. Uh, but uh, Rashford and Bruno, definitely good value. Could be a double up uh, off the start as well because their fixtures are, are very, very good. Uh, not playing a really, really tough opposition um, until basically like Man City. Yes, Spurs away, but again... Bit of a transitional period. Brighton at home, favor United more at home, um, and then Man City is the t only tough game they really have, like super tough game. Um, is even Brighton at home? They're going to be a much more diminished Brighton. Oh, I, I didn't even see Arsenal there. Sorry, uh, Arsenal away. Yeah, that's going to be tough. Sorry. So Arsenal um, and Man City in the opening ten, they're going to be the tough ones. But you would expect United to be able to handle them, or do at least somewhat well in those games. So one intriguing thing would be since United do play Arsenal in game week four, it could be a situation where you wildcard them out uh, in game week four if you wanted to do that early wildcard. Um, so Bruno Fernandez is on the watch list, as is Marcus Rashford. Some other notable points, Sancho comes in at 7 million, Anthony at 7 million. Again, could be options, but not really looking at them. Martial, 6.5 million. Again, too injury prone. United likely to bring in a uh, first time forward uh we are down to the last uh six or so here newcastle nick pope 5.5 million we'd expect him to come at this price um it's just a bit too much their fixtures are i think worst on the fantasy football scout ticker uh the opening four is aston villa at home city away liverpool at home brighton away very very tough fixtures um i don't expect nick pope to be picked uh, by a lot of the kind of the community. Uh, Kieran Trippier is the other uh, defender uh, that is the same price as Robertson, 6.5 million. Uh, did brilliantly last season, just shy of 200 points. Uh, he could definitely kick on, but I think a lot of managers will start with him. Uh, and then if Newcastle aren't picking up the clean sheets, like against City, against Liverpool, against Brighton, he might get sold and he might drop in price quick. Uh, and then that'll be just in time for when he does go on a decent run. Uh, and then everyone can get them at a slightly discounted price, potentially. This is, what I would say, alongside Bakayo Saka, this is probably one of the other major kind of boo-boos, as it were, uh, that the FPL Tower has made. Uh, Sven Botman should not be 4.5 million. He should be the same as Cher. Um, I don't understand what the difference is between the two, other than the fact that one scored 10 points more than the other. Um... I think Sven Bauman should be 5 million because then you have a situation where you have a Champions League playing defender uh, that's playing for Newcastle and a team that came fourth last season that is the same price as most of the starting uh, newly promoted defenders, which makes no sense. So I think they messed up here. Um, he's going to be, again, one to add to the watch list because he's just going to be kind of a 4.5 million defender that you don't have to necessarily play, but it's one that you can just have. Um, that you know is going to play for a good team. 
Um, in midfield, I like the the likes of Bruno Guimaraes potentially playing in a more advanced role uh, now that Tonali has signed uh, for uh, Newcastle. It'll push Bruno Guimaraes a little bit more forward uh, if they have uh, Tonali in more of like the kind of the conductor role. Joe Linton as more of the box to box, and Bruno Guimaraes as the kind of advanced midfielder. Six million could be a good price point, but I think that's a wait and see, especially with their fixtures. Callum Wilson is one to look out for as well. Uh, not necessarily in the opening few because of their fixtures not being great, but being 0.5 more than Isak does definitely uh, allow for easy trades from him to Watkins uh, or down to the likes of Gakpo or Nunez or Nkunku or whoever. Uh, so I do like that price point for Wilson, and they give you a little bit of a, you know, kind of a, a say here and there. If either one of them are out in Newcastle have good fixtures, then you probably just pick the other one. It just makes sense. Um, so yeah, Botman's the only one I actually want to put on the watch list here. Moving into Nottingham Forest. Um, not really interested in Forest, to be honest, off the start. A uh, bit of a mixed bag of fixtures. Chelsea, Arsenal, Man United, and Man City away with a couple of okay fixtures at home. But four away fixtures against four teams that are going to be competing for the top four for the Premier League is no bueno. Uh, then you have prices, I mean, like Nico Williams, why is he 4.5 million? Nobody knows um, when Aurier is going to be the starting right back and he's going to be uh, 4.5 million. So in defense, not really interested at the moment. Gibbs White is one to potentially look at uh, on penalties. Uh, got 17 goal involvements last season. It's just the fixtures off the start aren't ideal, so probably won't be looking there. And same for Brendan Johnson, Awini, uh maybe. Uh, the likes of um, Ian Acho, if he were to sign, could be an option. Uh, but they do have a crazy amount of forwards. I mean, they got Awani, Chris Wood, they got uh, Emmanuel Dennis. I mean, they just have so many different, so many players. Um, so we're not going to be touching uh, any Forest player off the start, at least. Uh, Sheffield United. Uh, Bulldog is an interesting one, and same for Basham. Uh, two players that uh, did play quite a lot of minutes. Uh, when they're originally uh, in, when uh, Sheffield United were promoted back in the 2019-2020 season, um, they they saw quite quite heavy minutes uh, in those two seasons, and they are coming at four million, so they could be an option. Now, whether that's changed and the system's different, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but Amadozik, Amadozik, Dozik. I don't know how to pronounce that name. Um, but he is apparently quite good on set pieces. I think he scored five or six goals. Uh, we saw his price, $4.5 million earlier in the week. Uh, he could be the one to look out for as a rotation option. Um, again, three home fixtures in one, four, and six if you're looking to rotate between him and a Villa defender if you wanted to. So we'll add him to the watch list just as an option uh, there. Um Brian Brewster and uh, McMurney and Die. I don't think I'm going to be going for any cheaper striker. I think it's going to be either non-playing uh, one of the mid-price strikers or Holland, basically, uh, off the start. So they will be a wait and see there. <laughs> Three teams left. We do have Spurs. Uh, their newly signed goalkeeper, uh, Vicario, is coming at $5 million. Makes sense. Probably won't be going there. A little bit too expensive. Spurs defense, not really uh, looking at that at all. Uh, unless Jed Spence magically starts, you know, becoming an absolute beast uh, under uh, Pasta Kalklu, then maybe, but for now, wait and see on that. Uh, the interesting prices is Harry Kane, 12.5 million. Same price as Salah. There was speculation that he might come in at 12. He's coming at 12.5. Richarlison has also gone back to a midfielder at 7 million. Madison's coming at 7.5. Kulisevsky at 7. Son at 9 million. I think this could be where, with them in Chelsea, it could be a bit interesting. So I think that's where we could um, we could see some differentials off the start. I think Madison at 7.5 million. Feeding Son, feeding Kane could be very, very good. So, uh, I would put Kane on the, on the, am I likely to start with Kane off the start? Probably not, to be honest. Um, just because of his price. Am I likely to start with Son off the start? 
Probably not. Uh, but you never say never. I mean, he's a nine million midfielder, three million price reduction. Madison off the start. I would probably rather start with a city mid over him, uh, anyway, or try to find the cash for like Odegaard or something like that. Uh, two more teams, West Ham, uh, Ariola is definitely one to look at on the watch list. 4 million could just literally take Fabianski's place. Uh, so that's kind of a wait and see, not really looking at the defenders that all come in at 4.5 million. Bowen at 7 million. Again, not really looking there. Fixtures are okay ish off the start, but get way worse from Game Week 5 onwards. So, again, not really looking there. Um, Antonio at 6 million could be a good price, but again, fixtures are showing that we probably should stay away from West Ham unless you're looking for a potential playing goalkeeper for man like Ariola if he were to play over Fabianski. Uh, and then Wolves, probably, I would say probably the other mistake was that Jose Salas is kind of a non-asset because of the fact that he's 5 million um, and probably won't end up going down to 4.5 million by the end of the season, to be honest. Uh, Wolves could potentially be in trouble this season. Kilman is potentially moving to Serie A. They've already lost Collins, so that's a big problem for them. Uh, and they just have no way to really score goals, to be honest. Uh, so again, it could be a bit of an issue for them. Wolves are definitely a wait and see, not really looking at them at all. So if we change everything to the watch list, these are the players uh, that we have. So we have two pages here and four goalkeepers to pick from. So we shall do that. Let's see if we can build a team. So let's start off with players that are Guaranteed, sure shot thing, 100%. Not even thinking about it. Definitely in my team. Uh, well, for starters, uh, <clears throat> we'll go from the back first. Ariola at 4 million. When I saw his price point, I said, well, literally Fabianski could just literally just get replaced by him. Um, and Ariola could just take his place. So we'll put him straight in there. Uh, cheap defenders. Uh, Bell played more, way more games than Bayer. Uh, if he is not going to be a replaced uh, in any way, shape, or form. He's currently playing in the Gold Cup, uh, or Golden Cup, I think, or whatever it's called, um, for his country. So that could cause him to miss a few. But again, you're not likely going to play him um, off the start. But even still, he's a 4 million defender. Who cares, uh, to be honest. And he's already quite highly owned anyway. Uh, so it may be better to go with the, the cheaper player, because if people say, oh, he's not playing, and they sell him, and he could go down in price. So, um, if we go to uh, defenders, uh, Zinchenko, another one guaranteed. I'm pretty sure to be in my starting uh, starting team. Five million, unless he's injured. I think he's just straight in there. He's just way too cheap to not put into into the team. Um, uh, I would say a Stupinian as well is definitely going to be in there. Five million for a team that just played so, so well. He's super attacking. Um, could have had way more uh, goals and assists um, and will probably thrive even further under De Zerbi. Um Trent's not a definite guarantee. If we move into midfield, I would say Rashford is a definite guarantee uh, for sure. Um Uh, where's Rashford? Rashford. Um, definitely in there. Bakayo Saka, another one, definitely in there as well at 8.5 million. I just think that it just doesn't make sense not to put him in there. Um, and then I would say it probably comes down to Odegaard, Martinelli, or Jesus um, to be in there. So we'll have to come back to that. We're just going to go with guarantees right now. Uh, any guarantees in midfield? Uh, to be honest, I think Phil Foden. I think Phil Foden, especially with Kevin De Bruyne out, I think is potentially just a guarantee in my midfield. Um, or at least that 7.5 million spot uh, is uh, pretty much a guarantee. Uh, so whether that is like, a, it, if that ends up being Havertz as an example, or Mares or Grealish or whoever, I think that's pretty much a mainstay there. 
Uh, forward, uh, I mean, we're, we're putting him in there for sure. Uh, almost certainly. Um, and then a 4.5 million forward. Uh, I guess we'll just pick anyone from a team that I probably won't. Uh, that's going to be lowly owned. So let's go to like... Uh, likelihood is I probably don't want three Luton players. So they got any... F He's like the super, super cheap, like not owned. Here we go. This dude. Aribim Pebble. Pebble? Pebble. We'll put him in as a 4.5 million forward because we don't want him to go down in price or anything randomly. Um, I think I'm definitely going to have a 4.5 million forward. I don't think I'm going to have uh, three playing forwards. So that pretty much kind of covers half the team. So if we go back to our watch list here, Leno Pickford, um, Leno Pickford, and who was the other goalkeeper? Johnson. Um, I think Pickford is probably the best one off the start um, in terms of fixtures. Leno's are okay. Um, it could get some save points, but I think Pickford is one to potentially just kind of go for just because his fixtures are good and he will make saves and stuff, so... Um, players that I don't see myself or see struggling to potentially not have them in the team, um, I think is probably got to be in the midfield, to be honest. Um, I think Man United's fixtures off the start. If Bruno plays the way Bruno can play um, in an advanced role where he's not stuck out on the right-hand side, um, you know, doing somebody else's graft work and he's in the middle and he's controlling things. 8.5 million Bruno Fernandes. I mean, if we look at this, when he came into the league here, in the 1920 season and the, 20, uh, the 2021 season, <clears throat> that's when he was this kind of price. He could be crazy good value. So we shall add him in there. Um, and then I think you just kind of got to triple up on United and Arsenal, to be honest. Um, so that makes it easier to put in the likes of Luke Shaw uh, in defense. I think that just kind of makes the most sense to me, to be honest. 5.5 uh, million is on set plays. Very attacking. Can play center back if need be. So I think that's our triple United right there. Unless United sign a striker or something like that, that kind of proves things or if Mason Mount's kind of the more attacking one then we get him over Fernandez and save money uh, and then it's kind of this last midfield or striker spot is this going to be a uh, Odegaard or a Martinelli or a Gabriel Jesus um, I think Jesus is very frustrating at times um, and I'm personally kind of leaning more towards Martinelli slash Odegaard and go for a slightly cheaper forward uh, so I'm actually going to go uh, for, I'm actually going to put Martinelli in there just for the time being. I just want to see what the budget looks like with 8 uh, rather than 8.5. Um, Forward-wise, we can go for uh, a slightly cheaper forward if we wanted to. Um, in the, like this kind of 7.5 million bracket, uh, I think Nkunku could just be brilliant, to be honest. Um at 7.5 million, he's just so, so good. Uh, and I think he could be one that we just kind of start with uh, from the beginning and kind of back Chelsea to do do well. And then 4.5 million, we could just pick kind of any defender we wanted to uh, at this point. Um, <clears throat> if we wanted to kind of do more of a uh, two rotational defenders, we could do that. Um, if we like you know, downgraded Shaw, um, if we wanted to do that, and just go for two United attackers, um, we probably only want to play three at the back, all things considered, um, if we could find 0.5 million somewhere, so if we did have Odegaard, um, we would have to get a 4 million defender, and then we basically have no playing players, pretty much, um, so that is still an option. So what I might do is still put Bayer in there anyway. Um, and just kind of have the... Um, 
have the 0.5 million for like price changes or anything random like that uh, for the time being. So if I do make transfers, confirm transfers, you can do as many transfers as you want up until the actual deadline, uh, which is August 11th. Put Pickford in goal. We'll put Shaw in uh, at left back. Uh, Holland definitely not on the bench. Don't want that. Saka goes in there. Uh, not going to worry too much about um, where the position on the field. Uh, Bell would probably be ahead of all the rest, I would say. Um, we'll still put the captaincy on Holland. Vice captaincy on, on Rashford. Although we might not necessarily captain Holland gaming one. We'll have to wait and see on that one. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my first kind of like draft-ish looking thing. Um, I kind of just threw it together. Maybe it's right. Maybe it's wrong. Maybe it's bad. Maybe it's good. Um, maybe we'll do a video uh, later on after kind of we've seen what some teams have done and kind of how they've um, they've kind of uh, bought uh, maybe you know in a few weeks time United have bought Rasmus Hoyland and he's coming at a cheap price or they've bought Onana and he's coming at five million and that might free up a spot you can get 0.5 million off Shaw um to put in for for you know for Pickford um and then you can change Shaw to maybe a Mad City defender if you wanted to because you could take Shaw put in um put in stones take out Pickford put in Onana and then off you go if he's 5 million so one to kind of keep an eye on um, let's take a look quickly before we uh, sign off here. This has been quite a long stream. For if we sort uh, by team selected by. So this is basically like the most popular players um, by position. So Ramsdale seems to be quite high. Or Ariel at 4 million potentially could be a starter um, playing 4 million goalkeeper. Even though we might play Pickford over him, still an option there. Ederson is going to be an auto pick percentage that high, so wouldn't worry about that. Uh, defenders again, Estupinian and Shaw. We've picked two of the higher defenders. Uh, Trent is a player that we could potentially put in the team. It would mean probably sacrificing uh, the likes of uh, one of our midfielders potentially. Um, if we were to let's say get rid of Foden. Uh, change Zinchenko to a uh, 8 million defender. We would have to take 3 million off of Phil Foden and they're dropping down to 4.5. If we could take 2 million off in Kunku and go for like one of those 5.5 .5 million strikers, then we could still have a 6.5 million midfielder. That is also an option. So I'm not ruling out Trent here. Uh, he is definitely highly owned. Botman is highly owned as well. Same with Trip here. This is kind of going to be a thing. But we did pick quite a few uh, highly owned players here. Uh, in midfield, Saka, Rashford, uh, Bruno Fernandes uh, in the top six. Uh, and Bomo could be one that we go for as well. Not ruled him out. Salah's still there. Matoma is still there. Eze is someone that we could do as well. Uh, if we wanted to go a bit more money, if we wanted to find ways to get Trent, that could be an option. Uh, we know he's going to start. and He's just flourished under... Um, uh, under both managers, to be honest, when he has played. Uh, and then forwards, in terms of highly owned forwards, Gabriel Jesus, another one. Uh, we did talk about him. Kane's still up there. Watkins up there. Ferguson, we didn't even look at, to be honest. Six million, but could be an option if we know he's starting. Um, so, yeah. Seems like there is a... I mean, Holland's percentage. I mean, he's gone up 2% in the last 20 minutes or so which is kind of crazy to think about. But this is kind of just like a rough little thing. This isn't like my first draft by any means. I just kind of picked players that kind of just looked kind of good from last season. Um, turns out you can make a pretty good team um, as long as you don't have Salah. But if you had Salah, let's say instead of Bruno Fernandes, uh, you got to find four million somewhere. And that's going to be quite difficult to do. Uh, so I think the one, one, uh, one premium is going to be quite popular. Um, I don't think no premium is going to be a thing, but who knows? Um, but yeah, 
uh that's that's kind of the kind of first impressions i think overall the pricing is uh pretty good again i still think they messed up on uh the arsenal pricing i think too cheap in general i think botman is too cheap um and i think they made a couple of players uh, potentially too expensive um on like the lower end like strikers so like uh solanke i think 6.5 might be a bit too much but we'll have to wait and see those sorts of players could be like a bit too much um we found potentially some playing four million defenders which is always nice uh, if Ariola is a starting four million goalkeeper that always helps too uh, as a backup to our 4.5 million goalkeeper uh and i think overall uh it should be a good uh fpl season so let's move over to the big screen And you could probably hear that my voice is starting to go, so I'm gonna go conserve that. Um, had it, like I said, I mentioned, had been a bit uh, ill over the past couple of days, but FPL is live, so we gotta do uh, the stream. We gotta check out what's good. So make sure to like, favorite, follow, comment, subscribe. You know all the drill. Pile of Fame two two six on all platforms. Uh, make sure to check out Fantasy Football Scout. Link is in the About section in the description uh, of any YouTube video or pinned over on my Twitter. So make sure to check that out. They have all the needs that you might need coming up for this new FPL season. They have a preseason discount of 30% off. Make sure to use our link uh, for that. It's over, like I said, in my Twitter bio in the About section here on Twitch or over in any video description on YouTube. Thank you all for watching, and until the next one, take care.